Hi, it's Lee from Silverback Runner, and this video is really something that's really close to my heart because I'm 57 years old and I love running. And to do that, I've really got to be smart about my recovery because let's start at the beginning. Why should you care as a 50 plus runner or even a 40 plus runner as you're getting near your 50s? Why should recovery be really important to you? Let's look at the kind of downside. You're going to get more out of less. I'm a positive person, but you've got to also accept certain realities. As your age, there's not as much blood pumping into that heart. Your muscles aren't what they were at 20 or 30. There's always outliers out there. I'm talking about averages here. I know there's, you know, people are all over the internet that you can see and perhaps we're going to get that however just look at the average that is the reality if you want to continue to run into your 50s and maybe even getting faster or at least as I call it start to begin to outrun aging for as long as you can recovery becomes the key thing now for me recovery is an ongoing process and what I mean by that is People think of recovery as something that starts at an end of a run. In effect, it does. But I'd like to get you to start looking and thinking maybe as recovery as something that is ongoing. So throughout your day, so you wake up this morning and you go to bed tonight thinking about recovery the whole time, <laughs> the whole time through your day, but as a process. And that way, then your recoveries are going to be better. And this is what this video is going to be about. The, the things that you can do throughout your day, throughout a month, throughout a year, so that you recover more effectively as a runner. Now, let's get clear what recovery is. You start, let's say you're in a state, if you call it 1 to 10. Before a run, you're in state 10. You're in good shape, the best shape you could be in at that particular day or time, whatever that is. And then when you finish that run, you're at a six or a seven. Recovery is the next time you run, will you be at a 10 again? Or are you just at a seven? And if you are, if you haven't recovered correctly, you're going to get more injuries. And this is massive for older runners because injuries take longer to get over and the biggest thing for a older runner is consistency that's where you can really perhaps get gains over younger runners that if you can be consistent i know as a younger runner i relied on my genetics and my age i wasn't a consistent runner i just happened to be a good runner but now I'm getting more out of my running, but the reason I am is I'm making the most of what I've got and I'm being consistent. Now, the one thing that stops me from being consistent, well, two things really, is one mindset, which we're not going to really go into in this video, but also injuries. Or I suppose you could add also if you're feeling tired and jaded, yet again, that comes down to the wrong type of training or you're not recovered. So that's what this whole video is going to be about. So let's move on to the first topic on this video. One of the factors that I think about running recovery when you're older is key is that running recovery is an ongoing process. It never technically stops that instead of just thinking at an end of a run, which we will come to that, but You've got to think, is it an ongoing process? So when you're looking at that process, you've got to be looking at your training. Now, I'm not going to go into micro detail with training, but the overview of good recovery as an older runner in your training is a couple of things. One, making sure that you've got that recovery within your training week, having a couple of days. So for instance, if you've got Monday's the first day of the week, Sunday's the last I would tend to have Mondays as a rest day, Sundays will be my long day. Now, if you wanted to run on a Monday, probably be uh, just what I call a leg loosener, something really easy. 
but I'm very focused on always asking why I'm doing a run. So I try to do as much running with a purpose and try and avoid too many junk, I call junk miles. So it's trying to be as efficient with your running as you get older because you've got to do more with less. You, your recovery won't be as quick, you're not as strong, you're Sadly, your heart and your muscles don't respond the same as you did when they were 20 or 30. So you've got to be a little bit cute with your training to get the most out of yourself. And the really important thing is consistency. If you can avoid injury and be out consistently, then that's where you're going to get the most wins. So having those rest days is really important, but also utilizing the type of training that will get you the best recovery as well. Now, I don't want to get too controversial, but you've probably heard of things like math running. And all I want to say really is about an 80-20 rule for me, where you've got 80% of your runs at easy pace. So if you're utilizing your heart rate monitor, a chest strap, then you know, you're working in those zones. If you're doing the math method or any other method, that you're at a rate where you and I, if I was running with you, we could have a conversation. 80% of your runs at that rate. Now, another 20%, as I say, the 80-20 the, the rule doesn't have to be exact, but for me, probably a couple of faster runs a week, could be tempo, could be intervals, but for some runners, it may even be just something like some strides at an end of a run. Now, I know some people are very invested in the math method and they say, oh, I would never do that. All I would say is look at what works for you. For me personally, running goes beyond just running. It's about generally being healthier and fitter and having more vibrance and having some speed sessions or speed work in my running. I just feel as a better runner. However, you cannot underestimate the benefits of running steady. I did the break 8, 10 in 10 about, well, in 2012. And when I did the training for that, I had no real training schedule. I just decided I was going to run easy and try and run easy often and long and build my up self up to long distances. Because if I was doing 10 marathons in 10 days, that seemed to make the most sense to me had no heart rate monitor, I just made sure that I felt I was in control of my running. When I came to do a marathon just prior to the 10 in 10, I think it was in April 2012, without any speed running, I did my fastest ever marathon time. I think it was about three hours, 24 minutes. So it obviously works, you know, where you're building up this really solid aerobic base. And I think Depending where you're arriving as a 50 plus year old runner, you know, if you're arriving as an early adopter to endurance or long distance running, then doing easy runs makes a lot of sense because I liken it to a car. If your car's brand new and you drive that baby really fast, then it can probably take it. You may have a few problems, but less likely. But if the car's a little bit older and you really run that car always at high speed, then things are going to start dropping off after a while. <laughs> and so it's pretty common sense that some of your, or a majority of your runs have to be easy or very steady. As I say, I like to add in that 10, 15, 20% of my runs are at pace. And as I say, even just some strides in there. I like that variation. I think that's good for me, good for my running, but you have to decide what works for you. There's lots of marketing in running. I just find that often the truth is more in the middle than the extremes. But as an older runner, steady runs, easy runs, you know, lower heart rate running can be hugely beneficial. But don't ignore some sort of speed work would be my tip to you. So one of the things to look at, pretty obvious, when you finish, say, a long run, um, when I say a long run, something 60 minutes 90 minutes depending on also your exertation levels you want to look at getting some sort of nutrients back into your body to aid your recovery as quickly as possible so something i quite is like a i don't i don't have whey protein but whey protein 
work perfectly fine. It's brilliant, actually. But I would use something like hemp powder, pea protein, or one of the mixtures of just something to get protein, a couple of scoops in there, protein into your body pretty quickly. Another one is chocolate milk. Chocolate milk works really well as a recovery drink post rum. And I, I put the protein in, some nut, nut butter and a banana or something. Just get something into your body pretty quick. You can have a kind of post rum meal if that's your thing. I find I can't stomach that straight away, so a shake works really well. Then later on, perhaps in the evening, I might utilise a massage gun, something like that, just on my legs, just get my legs moving, or a, a roller. This is completely depends. Lots of people will tell you they work really well. Lots of people will tell you they really don't. I really like the massage gun for really getting into my calves and things like that. The roller is really good in, more into my glutes. Another little tip is that sometimes people say to use balls, particularly into your glutes and stuff. I've got hard balls I can use, but funny enough, I really find sometimes just like a tennis ball, though it's quite soft, really seems to get into those inaccessible areas, glutes almost at the base of your back, in those little areas where perhaps sometimes you get some tightness, or at least I do. So you can try things like that. Just get the blood circulating perhaps to areas that have got tired, maybe have a little few niggles. I definitely like using the roller and the massage gun for that aspect. And though it goes beyond the remit of really this video, think about strength training as well, just to reinforce your obvious strength, your ability to go longer with less impact on your body. If you're in better shape generally, then things go wrong less. The less things that go wrong, the more consistent you are going to be running every day. So it's those sort of aspects that make a huge difference. I sometimes utilise a weighted running vest. If you want to do strength training, but you're not sure about utilising weights, because the balance is, and the argument is sometimes against strength training. So if you go into weights, you increase your risk of injury if you don't do certain lifts and certain things correctly or, or right. So using your own body weight is a much safer and initially much safer way to progress. If you want to add a bit in, then a weighted vest can be quite a good way of doing it. Just doing some squats with the vest on or something like that works really well. But I definitely wouldn't be against utilising weights. I think using deadlifts and things like that really strengthen up the body for running. And I'm actually trying out kettlebells at the moment for that sort of dynamic, because I, I get bored just with lifting weights that dynamic side of it. But yet again, you've got to weigh up, you know, the likelihood of how likely you are to get injured versus the benefits, the obvious benefits of utilising some weight to build up strength in your body as an older runner, because that is something that is going to dissipate as you get older. Now, this one is a bit odd because don't let technology be your full-time trainer for recovery. I feel bad in a way because I love technology and I'm looking at technology all the time to help me with my recovery. Hmm, bit contradictory. Things are contradictory because most things are in the middle and not the extreme. Where I, I, I love it is I can utilise heart rate when I'm running, pace. All these things are tremendous ways to help you. But to give you an example, I ran a couple of runs last week without my chest heart rate monitor. And the heart rate monitors on the watch is pretty awful. Well, terrible, to be honest. And of course, I don't tend to wear my watch correctly. I don't think about it. I did these couple of runs, and if the heart rate was to be believed, I should be calling an ambulance straight away because my heart rate was going through the roof, supposedly. It wasn't. I was doing an easy run, and I could talk to you like I'm talking to you now, pretty much. Why does that matter? It sets off a chain reaction in my Strava it was telling me that I'd had a hard run. Well done, this is above your average. It wasn't. It, my, my training peaks 
New threshold reached. No, it wasn't. My watch was saying, it's going to take you 46 hours to recover from this run. No, it won't. This is where it goes wrong. So you've got to be consistent. That's my point. If you want to use your watch, particularly heart, get a chest monitor. But even though then it's the map, it ain't the territory. It ain't reality. It is a map. Like when you travel, you look at a map and it gets you where you need to go. But it isn't the same as being in the place. It's still a map. And that is really what the technology does. Don't get me wrong. I'll be probably on these videos on other times showing you technology. I love technology. I'm looking at the stride at the moment for a running power meter. I think the technology on that is fascinating and I will be looking at that and I'll probably be sharing videos on that. But it's still the map and not the territory. It's another guide which can be really helpful for your recovery. But I see so many people on Facebook groups and such like absolutely getting like your VO2 max on these watches. It's not accurate. Now, if it's going in a direction one way or the other, maybe there's some broad scope of truth in that. If you're, if it's telling you it's going up, getting better, probably it's got a broad truth that you are probably getting fitter. If it's coming down, there's probably some broad truth it's coming down. Is it accurate? No, it's not. Now, why does this matter for your recovery? If you get hung up on it, you're going to be all over the place. What I would say is look at or, or look into how you feel. What is your energy like? Do you feel recovered? That's probably one of the best ways that you can look at it. Another way is if you've got a heart strap monitor is once you get an idea of your heart rate zones, what they are, then a raised heart rate, or you're struggling to keep your heart rate in a zone, and especially an easy zone, and you are running easy, and you're conversational, will probably be a broad indicator that you may not be as recovered as you think. But yet again, it's only a bit of information. And without having technical scans like a pro athlete every day or every week, you're never really going to know completely. Yes, use the technology to guide you as a map, but don't get too hung up on it with your recovery or you're going to probably be led down some very odd avenues. Just use your body as your recovery. Look at what your sleep's like. If your sleep's all over the place, you're probably not recovering or you're stressed and that will hamper recovery. So look at sleep. Look at your mood. Look at how your body feels. These are things that will be little flashing lights that can help you adjust. And if you've got a running plan and you're meant to go out on that faster run and you didn't sleep well and you feel jaded and things that don't feel right, then adjust. Go out. If you're going to go out at all, go out for an easy run. Move the fast run another day. Don't become a slave to technology or any running plan. Oh boy, are we in a big area here. Nutrition, oh my God, this is a massive area, but it's also an area where there's a lot of money to be made and a lot of opinions. For the clarity, I don't eat meat. But then again, then people say, are you vegan? No, then you're a vegetarian. People want to label you, that's my point. All I would say is what's winning the plate wars in your life. Simple as. You can be a man or a woman that believes in the carnivore diet. Fair enough. You can be a vegan. You can be a vegetarian. You can be a pescatarian for fish. Whatever you identify as. One, what's winning the plate wars? Two, how are you feeling? Three, keep doing it if it's working. Now, my broad advice is so generically general that it probably would not warrant uh, a video. But I can only tell you what I found. I gave up meat because I just went off it. And I do have some ethical issues, but they are around actually everyone, everything, animals and us, in the respect 
that uh, we look at this recent events happening in the world is how we treat our animals and planet impacts us ultimately. So it's selfish on my part. Also, I look to how I eat for performance. Now, does that mean you don't eat meat? No, because I think we are all similar, but we're not the same, genetically speaking. You've just got to find what works for you in your mind and in your body. But what I have found is when people move to uh, what some people might call an extreme diet, vegan, carnivore, the real takeaway, excuse me, the pun, is that you become aware of what you're eating. And I think that's the main thing. So what's winning the plate wars? The obvious point, in my opinion, if you're going to eat meat, what's the quality like? Is it processed? How is it cooked? Is it of a good quality of meat? So from that protein point of view, your proteins, your carbohydrates and your fats. So that's the first thing. And then you've got that bit of meat on the plate. What's with it? Is it just chips? I've got friends like that, love their meat. Very macho, very... But they've got nothing green on their plate and they've got some carbohydrates, but it's all processed carbohydrates. It's a case of looking at that because that will impact your recovery. I have to look at the fact I don't really like eating meat, but I know I need more protein. Now, people can get into the argument around protein with vegans and vegetarians. I do eat some eggs, so there's some protein in there. But even if I've gone through phases where I haven't eaten many eggs, and at the end of the day, then you may have to supplement to get that protein because the, the way the protein synthesizes in your body is different from meat. Yet again, I know I'm probably going to get comments from people that have one extreme point of view to the other extreme point of view. I'm not really interested because whatever works for you, keep doing. I'm only saying what works, one for me and for a lot of people, which is rather blindingly obvious to get a good balance of the balances of protein, carbohydrates and fats, but make those babies of high quality. That's it. You know, I'm not going to go into this video about all the proteins that you could eat, all the carbohydrates you could eat, all the fats you could eat and the way you would break it down. Because yet again, you're going to get everybody arguing about that. But your body will let you know. I found that I'm a pretty skinny guy. I've never had a problem putting weight on. I, can't, I actually have trouble keeping weight off. And for that reason, I've always been pretty high on my carbohydrates. It suits me. But I try and keep those carbohydrates not always crappy. But I like crappy carbohydrates as well. But I try and have some quality carbohydrates, some rice and stuff like that. I like my protein, but I don't eat meat at this point. So I will find other proteins, perhaps a half a protein shake, carbo fats, nut butters, all those kind of things. What are you eating? Just look on the plate wars every day, from the breakfast time to your lunch time to your evening meal. What's happening? And how are you feeling like that? Have you got plenty of energy? Do you get up in the morning with energy? Do you have energy throughout the day? Do you recover? quickly from your runs. If not, don't make your nutritional diet a religion. Eat for you what works. But the starting point is your plate wars and pretty much looking at your proteins, your carbohydrates and your fats. What? How many of those are quality ones? How many of them are processed? How much of that are you eating versus not eating? And if you have got a particular kind of more extreme kind of preferences on your diet how are you supplementing those perhaps things that you lack in that diet so it's that simple but your diet or lack of will have a massive impact on your recovery as you get older because it's the fuel that's going into your body that's an area you've got to look at okay we've spoken about nutrition and I've ended on adding in perhaps something if you need it, either because your body lacks it or perhaps your diet lacks it. 
So supplementation, it's a massive area again, and it's also controversial. I just try and keep it pretty simple. As I said, I don't eat meat, so I have some sort of supplementation based on that, B12, and you might not need that, though there is some evidence that even people who aren't vegetarian or vegan do need some B12. So there's something worth looking at, though most cereals and stuff are fortified with B12. Vitamin D is a massive one. I think in recent months it's come up again and again, and that is well looking, well worth looking at. I, I do have uh, vitamin D, and I think it is one of those, it's a hormone, and you can't get it except in the sun, and as most of us wander around in clothes and spend a lot of time indoors, then I think that's a bit of a no-brainer. I could rattle off loads and loads of supplements. I think it will depend a lot on you and your diet. I've taken sometimes magnesium at certain points, though I think I've got a high level of magnesium in my diet. I am a big fan of a green supplement. I only laugh because I've been to training sessions with big, beefy guys, real men's men, and the moment you talk to them about a green supplement or green drink, you'd think that you just told them that because most of them have tried them and they go into long stories about how awful they taste while they tell you they're going to lift their body weight over their head. I find it quite incredible. They don't taste amazing in every respect, but you can put them in orange juice or something like that. And I think the benefits outweigh the slightly, how should we say, natural taste and if you're not one of these people that is going to eat loads and loads of fruit th throughout a day, I, I, I like having some fruit throughout a day. I'm, I'm a big bananas and apples and uh, greens fan, but I will take my supplement as well because quite often they have things like seaweed and I know, kelp. I know it sounds disgusting, but these have got high levels of nutrients that can really help you recover from your running. And if you don't want to be shoving those on your plate or you want an extra boost from those, I think it's a really worthwhile thing to do. As in everything in the life, you will get people saying the pros and cons. I think all I would say is make sure you get something of high quality, provided that's not stuffing a load of rubbish in there. But I think it's well worth looking at. Really and truthfully, the longer your supplementation list gets, the more you probably should look at your diet and that, I've done that, I'm as guilty as anyone. I will sometimes, there'll be more and more, and I think, right, okay, where can I get this in my food? And I try and knock a bottle out of the equation. But I have found vitamin D stays up there pretty consistently. So if nothing else, definitely look at that. And maybe look at greens. And if you've got any deficiencies, try and alter those deficiencies initially in diet, and if not, then check out perhaps some level of supplementation. Okay, that's it. Running recovery for older people. Just want to finish off and say, I know I've been broad with some of what I've said. I've done that on purpose. I don't see any point in going into every little minute detail because there's going to be people that are going to have benefits overall. But what I will say is, Train, get in your training in a way that has recovery built in is key. I don't run seven days a week. I run even as a, a runner that I'm well adapted to running. I've been running all my life. I still run six to five days a week. I prefer to get that balance between volume and quality and recovery. And I know in my recovery is an ongoing process, as I said earlier. And to make that ongoing process work, that things like sleep, my stress levels are key, and um, diet is key, and making sure that what's winning my plate wars on a consistent level is key, though I'm not averse to a bit of cheesecake or a pizza, we're on this earth for a very short period of time. But having that, and the main thing is to look at recovery being your doorway to consistency because the more you can recover the less likely you are to get injured the more you can be consistent the more you can be consistent the more 
miles you will cover over a set period of time, be it a month, three months, or a year. There's always going to be weeks and months where you do a little bit less for whatever reasons, but if you're consistent, particularly as an older runner, you will find that you will either maintain your pace or you will get faster. And I think as an older athlete, that's as good as it gets because you've got to get more out of less. That's the harsh reality. So if you're maintaining your pace or it's minusculely perhaps getting slower, but it's not dropping off a cliff or you're getting faster. And as my son said the other day when he went for his first weight training day was, well, they're all going to be PBs. There is that. If you're starting, then you are getting faster. But if you're more established, then you may not be hitting those PBs when you were 20 or 30. But the thrill is to get close to those or closer and also slow any degeneration down. And this is really, in my book, what a lot of this video is about. Plus, passionately, that to put running aside, how is your health generally, your energy? People buy energy because energy is what we either have. You look at someone old and unwell, they lack energy. Energy is what you've got to have. And to get that, it's a diminishing thing as you get older. So to get it, you've got to, I use the analogy of a boat. You're in a boat all your life. But as you get older and the choppy waters come and the boat wobbles, you've got to look in that boat and go, what do I want to get rid of? And what do I want to keep? Because what got you to where you are probably won't get you where you need to go. And if you're drinking loads of alcohol, smoking, you might have been able to get away with that. But going from 50 onwards, if you want to be healthy, fit and faster, you're going to have to throw some things out of the boat and keep other things and perhaps create some new habits to make that work going forward. Anyway, I hope this video's helped. And if you've got any comments, I love them, even if they're negative, hey-ho. And if you found what I'm saying helpful, then great. And why not subscribe to the YouTube channel or get a comment so I can get some feedback of what's working and what's not working. Anyway, my name's Lee Boniface and I'm from silverbackrunner.com. And oh, by the way, we have got a blog that I'll link to as well if you want to have a little read of that. Bye for now.